So this is the video that you've been wanting. We're going to talk about carbs and gas mileage, five things you need to know. So I just got back to the house from being over at David Vizard's. We were actually discussing while I was over there the things that we're getting ready to talk about when it comes to carbs and gas mileage. And in fact, before we get started, you know, uh, I covered a lot of stuff with carb tuning way back in my carb tuning videos. Some of them videos are going on close to two years and I did vacuum advanced tuning videos. So, but the thing I realized is I never made the correlation about all of the things that play a part in getting good gas mileage with carburetors. And so that's what we're gonna go into, the five things that you need to know. Those five items are, one, engine specifications matter, first and foremost. Two, carb tuning. Three, ignition timing requirements for lean mixtures. Four, your driveline combination. And five, your driving habits. We're gonna go over all of those different aspects. Number one, engine specifications matter. When it gets down to it, the engine that the carburetor is sitting under has the greatest effect as to whether or not it's going to be a fuel economy master. Let's just get that out there. So what are the things that you should be looking for if you're building an engine that you want to try to get better mileage? Well, it all starts with compression. Why compression? Compression is actually the driving force in getting good fuel economy. The thing about it is, if the engine has more compression, it will have better drivability off of idle, okay? You wanna have the right camshaft in the engine on the right lobe centers so that it can actually develop a good bit of low end torque. Now, some people will say, well, Casper had a pretty rowdy cam in it. It was 10.7 to one compression with the old 393 and it had a pretty healthy solid roller camshaft in it. So it can be done. Why does more compression equal better fuel economy? Well, put it to you this way. In a combustion chamber, the larger that chamber is, the more the fuel molecules are spread about in that chamber, making it harder to ignite. You know, with a lower compression engine, it's not uncommon to have to run more fuel in the engine just to be able to make it run and keep it happy. You know, back in the early 1970s, coming off of the muscle car era into the smog era, compression ratios went from 10 to 1 all the way down to 8 to 1. And you didn't see an increase in fuel mileage. The thing about it is they were trying to get emissions. A lot of misconception out there, they lump fuel mileage and emissions into the same basket. And that couldn't be farther from the truth. In fact, a lot of the things that you can do to get better mileage will actually increase emissions. Compression ratio, camshafts, and even having a good cylinder head. A cylinder head that has an active intake port right off of the seat will provide more torque down low. That is just the way it is. So if you're building an engine and you're starting from scratch and you want it to get good mileage, put some compression in it. Uh, look at all of the modern day cars that we have today. They all are high compression engines. If you look over the 20 year span from the 1970s through the 90s, compression ratios started out down in eight and as the years went on, they kept increasing it because they figured out that that was the key to getting good fuel mileage. Two, carb tuning. I know, right? That just sounds obvious. Just lean the carburetor out as much as you can and you'll get all of the fuel mileage. Well, that's not always the case. The carburetor has no idea of what engine it's sitting on, but when it gets down to it, 
getting good mileage in carb tuning meaning it means that you tune each specific surf circuit in that carburetor so that you have the leanest mixture that you possibly can a lot of people confuse wide open throttle uh, timing requirements and fuel requirements for part throttle drivability you know basically when you're putting around town or even going down the interstate you want to have a lean mixture back in the early 1970s holly realized that it would take around a 15.6 air fuel ratio to get maximum fuel economy if you go much leaner than that the power drops off significantly requiring you to open the throttle even more which causes the fuel economy to go down so something to think about there the leaner you get it the less power you make meaning the more throttle input you have to give number three ignition timing this is one that i really like because tuning the carburetors is only half of the equation the leaner that you get the mixture the more advanced the timing has to be in order for the power to be delivered from that lean mixture this is not a new concept i talked about it in my first vacuum advance video back when i was over at david visor's house and i showed a clip of or i read a clip rather out of a 1946 motor auto repair manual it pretty much stated it and i'm going to insert a picture so that you can see what they figured out all the way back in the 1940s this isn't rocket science the leaner that you get the mixture the more timing advance you have to have think about it this way let's take an engine who has no vacuum advance on it at all if you go out there and you advance the ignition timing what happens with the engine it revs up right then what do you have to do after the engine revs up you have to turn the idle screw back down that is the whole goal because what you're doing is the engine is making more power and it's doing it with less throttle opening it's all about the throttle position it's all about the ignition timing happening at the right point so that that fuel is being burned in a proper manner and you're getting your bang for the buck number four your driveline component selection this is an interesting one too because i have some theory you may agree with you may not that's up to you but when it comes to selecting driveline components i'm typically not worried about the gas mileage i'm worried about the fun factor but let's talk about this like casper it has 430 gears in it right you would think that that would be a detriment to fuel mileage well not so in part around town is where casper was able to get 16 miles to the gallon now you take casper out on the highway turning 4,000 rpms and the mileage fell off in fact in the last video of casper running when we drove it to go see uncle tony it managed to get right at 12 and a half miles to the gallon and that was going up the eastern continental divide here in north carolina at about 70 miles an hour and had about an extra thousand pounds worth of stuff in the truck so my theory the more rear end gear that you have in a car the easier it is to accelerate from a stop which in turn means that you have less throttle opening to achieve the same speed it makes sense right the question is where is the balance between around town and highway the real question is what is the perfect gear ratio to be honest i do not know it all come down to your combination with your engine setup so on and so forth now once again going back to my 1970s references it wasn't uncommon for cars back then to have uh gear ratios from 276 241 and think about it they didn't get really good gas mileage even with gears that tall my personal opinion is i believe that when you have gears that are that tall 
the engine has to work harder in order to get up to highway speeds, which means you have more throttle opening. At the end of the day, it all comes to the amount of throttle opening that you have on your carburetor and how much fuel is going through your transfer slots and in your main jets. Number five, driving habits. This one is something that's specific to you and you only. Only you know how you drive. Now this may sound crazy, but 90% of the time that I'm driving Casper, I literally drive Casper like a grandpa. I know, right? Why well, it's the fun in having that kind of vehicle if you don't use and abuse it? Well, as I've gotten older, I've gotten a little bit wiser. I pick and choose the spots where I decide to open it up and just let it rip. And with Casper having that much power in an old truck, you better be pointed in the right direction. But driving for gas mileage requires discipline. You know, every time that you mash the accelerator pump, you are actually squirting fuel down the venturis of the carburetor. And half the time, it's for no reason at all. Most people will vary their foot without even recognizing it. So learning how to have that foot control and discipline can actually save you a bunch of gas. In summary, this video is not meant to be all comprehensive. This just literally scratches the surface of those particular items. So when I get Casper up and going after the No Name Nationals and we get this thing sorted out, I do plan on going down that rabbit hole again called gas mileage. You know, Mixed Up Boss is a completely different animal and I do believe it's going to give really good fuel mileage, and I'll tell you why. The engine has slightly more compression than the 393 did. 10.7 um, versus 11.1 to 1. So a little bit different there. Um, the engine is larger, so that's going to work against me. But one of the reasons why I chose uh, Dominators is, let's take a look at this. All right, here's a typical 4150. This is actually DV's carb for one of his dyno mules. We're going to be doing, or I'm going to be doing some work on it. And this is the old Dominator here. So I talked about throttle opening a lot in this video, right? Well, you see the throttle bores there. Just like in the last video, I showed the difference compared to the Dominator. My whole thought process in Dominators being able to deliver good gas mileage is with the larger butterfly, I'm able to get more air past the butterfly with less throttle opening, which will expose the transfer, transfer slot less. And that's the, going to be my theory on this. Now, how is it going to work in real world terms? I don't know. I don't have a clue because I've never done it before. But DV and I have talked and we think that it's a pretty solid plan. So we're going to stick to our guns and try to make it happen. The other part of the equation why I think Mixed Up Boss is going to deliver good fuel economy is the ignition. I don't know if you watched the dyno video where progression ignition saved a day. I actually have an infinitely adjustable vacuum advance with this distributor you need to go check that video out if you want to know how the distributor works it's really cool whereas with a traditional vacuum advance distributor i'm limited to what the vacuum can can deliver basically so i think with this new ignition system being able to dial in the perfect amount of vacuum advance at all rpm ranges Combined with the other aspect, I believe I will get that 20 miles to the gallon that I talked about in that video. Call me crazy? You don't have to. I already know it. So, until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later.